Thank you. Wow, it looks like a boxing match here. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Monterey. Hello, Decode. Thank you, Decode. Thank you, uh, Alexis and Jorge Diego and the whole team of Decode. Really, really nice to be here. Hey, Tucker. Wow. <laughs> no, it's incredible to see some uh, familiar faces. It's, it's really nice to be in Monterey. It's my first time in uh, Mexico. So, uh, a great experience. Um, uh, this afternoon, I was thinking, wow, um, I'm going to do a presentation and I'm going to talk about my work. And then um, I was thinking, well, tomorrow and the next day, we're, I'm going to do a workshop and uh, with a completely different topic. So, I kind of uh, forced uh, Jorge Diego to switch my presentation a little bit around because I would like to uh, share with you guys a little bit of what we're going to be talking about today, uh, tomorrow. Um, my background is industrial design. I have a studio in Amsterdam in the Netherlands and um, prior to that I worked in industry. I worked in large companies such as Philips Electronics and uh, Texas Instruments. So I have kind of a balance of both sides of the world, being your own boss and working for somebody else. Um, but enough said. This is going to be the topic tomorrow, hybrids. And I thought I would like to share a little bit of this with you guys. Hi, uh, the, the notion of hybrid has been with us forever. The idea of offsprings resulting from crossbreeding. And I think this is a very interesting definition of a hybrid. Um, from the dawn of civilization, from the beginning of time, we've all been obsessed, mankind has been obsessed with the notion of the hybrid. You know, first we were thinking of, in mythology, crossing the man and the, the horse or the, the, the centaur, you know, um, this kind of mythical description of a hybrid by putting two things together, creating something mythical or magical. And I, I, th I think this is very interesting, but um, uh, it, can, it seemed like it only happened in our mind's eye, in our stories. And uh, actually the reality is uh, a zonkey. This is a, a crossbreed between a donkey and a zebra. So, uh, in terms of nature, a hybrid is kind of a little bit uh, confusing and it doesn't really work, the, the crossbreeding notion of it. Uh, but our man-made environment is very interesting to think about hybrids of breeding different, uh, different products or different typologies together. And here, the notion of uh, crossing the, the borders between a lamp and a table. This is uh, the light table. I designed this in uh, 1997. It's a long time ago. Um, but the idea, the notion of crossing uh, a side table and a lamp, which is always kind of seems to, to be together, um, adding them into one product. Um, this is another kind of uh, evolution of a hybrid. The idea, remember your cell phone and your camera, and then suddenly you had a camera on your cell phone, and uh, this was more or less what you, you expect. You put two things and it becomes this. But I think it's more than that. It two, one plus one should be three in terms of thinking about a hybrid. So in the beginning, there were kind of cell phones with cameras on the back, and you tried the best possible to make them work well together and all that. And, but through evolution, through the descri description of the hybrid, through the, the development of the typology, um, we have our smartphones today. These are probably the best example of hybrid products. You have many functions and many different descriptions within one product. And I think that's very interesting. So the notion of us, the, the man-made environment, creating hybrids is very powerful. Here, this is uh, the idea of crossing a, a, a sofa and a bed. In the weekend, you get guests and you want some, 
you want some extra bed for them to sleep over. So they, there's phenomena, and then uh, slowly products start to develop, and most of them look like really a sofa in combination with a bed. And I, I, there's nothing wrong with it. It's actually very interesting as a typology. But um, um, this notion kind of str uh, triggered me to think about this, this idea. Um, the idea of a block of foam, so a bed, uh, and there is one little incision made into that block of foam, and that creates a, a lounge or some support for your back. Um, if you turn around that line into the other direction, you create a sofa. And uh, so that kind of notion, I think, is very interesting to think about. The idea of a little table and a chair. Why not? Uh, as it turns out to be, we have many of these in our school classrooms, you know. The, the little side table which is attached to your chair where you can put your notepad and write on and all that. And then a, a few years ago, um, we thought about maybe rethinking this notion, seeing how we can introduce it with a different twist. So this is kind of the basic form description, some of the, ske the sketch developments in that context and the result. Here the idea was really try to find a, a looped form which describes kind of a, the starting point of an artic articulating table. So you can see that kind of ending into that table definition. And the, the table has an articulation which goes from a passive description to put your coffee on to an active description where you want to use your notepad, your laptop, your book, your sketchbook, or whatever. And that duality is the nature of that type of hybrid. And then this, within this context, is the res result. Okay, so that's kind of what we're gonna be discussing tomorrow and the next day in the, in the workshops is to see how we can create new hybrids and give meaning to the concept of hybrids. Um, now, uh, our studio, Phase Design Studio, we started in 1998. It's a long time ago. Uh, before that, uh, as I mentioned, I worked in different industries. Um, and we're a small team of around eight people, mostly industrial designers, one uh, model maker, and we work for a lot of different clients. Half of, or part of our business is consulting for large corporations for consumer electronics and products of mass production, and the other side is furniture. And I think this kind of mix is a nice uh, balance to try to trigger your mind's eye, see if you can compel your clients in, in different ways, see if you can provoke different discussions and new ideas. Yeah, we're based in Amsterdam, and of course Amsterdam has many canals, and we're on one of those canals. And uh, it's, it's a nice... Uh, description because we have a whole row of windows and the light outside because of the water is really r very nice. Jorge can uh, vouch for that. Uh, uh, and of course we, ha we have a model shop and we, uh, we work a lot together but uh, the, this concept of working together is very important in our studio. The idea of collaboration, the idea of putting a lot of minds in one space to brainstorm and think about things that's super critical in developing the one plus one is three, in developing ideas which are hybrid, developing notions which are one step better. Um, yeah, but so this is kind of a typical glimpse of the studio. And uh, to kind of make our, our work a little bit more defined and more focused, there are a couple of things which, which I really believe in. And uh, I don't um, treat them as manifesto, but as guidelines. Notions which can help us be directed, notions which are almost implicit and intuitive within us, which guide our work. One of them is clarity. Um, clarity is the notion where you can try to bring meaning uh, out and make it clear in, in, within that context or within that product. Uh, it's, I think, um, uh, sometimes we, uh, clarity and simplicity are kind of mixed up. 
And uh, to, my, to me, they're not the same. There can be very clear, simple projects, but I think what's very interesting is to create clarity within very complex projects. Um, the other notion is concept. The idea where you can um, find the true essence of a product, bring it out, and have people look at it maybe t uh, even twice. Uh, the, the idea of concept is, uh, is critical in developing a project. And the third one is the context. Without the context, no project really exists. So these three elements are the guides, guiding kind of parameters or guiding lights for us within our projects. We don't set out to define different aspects in our projects for these three. It happens intuitively, but it's very important to have that in the back of your, your mind. Okay, um, first project, RT4. RT4 is a, a Dutch brand, very old, 125 years old. They produce furniture, and in the 60s and 70s, they had very iconic furniture designed by um, uh, one French designer called Pierre Paulin, and he really revolutionized the idea of upholstery uh, and how you look into that context. Well, anyways, this is an, a sofa, an armchair, and here the inspiration was, the, the, the concept was uh, one day sitting on an armchair looking at my arm and seeing that the, the arm of a chair is straight and the articulation in my arm is not straight. So could that be a notion or concept that we can build further upon? So we define this formality in this very simple sofa. The idea, this kind of uh, uh, faceted or truncated description of the back turning into the arm. And that reflects the shape of your arm. Uh, and then this is the result. Uh, so something completely different, the other side of our work, uh, Logitech, uh, the K40 keyboard. Um, this company came to us and said that they have uh, a new technology uh, based on Bluetooth and they, you can press a button and from one device, like your laptop, you can go to your smartphone and then for another button to your tablet. And uh, we thought, oh, this is quite interesting because actually we're inputting uh, in many different ways for the same thing, the typing. So for my smartphone, I'm using my little fingers and trying to navigate. For the laptop, I have my, uh, the keyboard on it. For the tablet, I have to uh, press the piece of glass. So by kind of defining one input medium for many devices was very interesting. So we started to look into it and try to explore and experiment. This is the result. What we wanted to do was make this functionality explicit. So um, not that we wanted to invent the functionality, we wanted to make it much more clear and understandable. We added a slot on the keyboard so you can put your tablet or your smartphone. We defined a, a rotary knob so you can very visibly look where you are. Am I on my smartphone or am I on my computer or on my tablet? Uh, and of course, trying to kind of find a, a description to it, a, a find, a, find a language which can slowly promote itself into a, a, a product which is descriptive of its brand. Um, Huawei. Huawei is a very large Chinese consumer electronics company. They develop smartphones and tablets and those things are very, very large in, in China uh, and slowly growing outside of China. And they are very keen on trying to extrapolate and exploit the notion of design within their brand. So we have been working with them for many years or maybe three, four years, that's in consumer electronics many. Um, and uh, here we worked with them to develop a, a tablet concept. Again, it, as always, this collaboration, the idea of uh, brainstorming and what, the idea of working together is a critical factor in the studio to start to set, to set the premise for the project. This is the result. The idea was to try to kind of use the, the concept of high quality of materiality, uh, creating something very explicit in terms of finish and, and feel. 
um, the, uh, the, the idea of metal sandwiched with the kind of a, a inner core of electronics and plastic, that these kind of notions kind of uh, define the project further. And of course, within the idea of a, a small tablet, there's not much you can do that's all about making it thinner and making the, the screen larger. So we p try to pay attention to the minute detailing and the fine definition of material. Denon. Uh, Denon is an audio file company. They make high-end speakers, high-end uh, audio equipment, and uh, they uh, were interested in developing some new products with us and creating kind of a space outside of this very expensive um, old-fashioned definition of audio. So we developed a few um, projects with them, and uh, the Envia is a Bluetooth-based product, uh, very simple, uh, very graphic, and what we wanted to do was to kind of create a face, a persona, which you can kind of latch on to. So basically, it's this kind of perforated metal grill, which has the, uh, the perforation going into small and then into nothing. And then under the grill, we added a piece of fabric. And that pa fabric creates kind of that gesture. So you can have different colors. You can actually exchange it yourself. And you kind of create a, a, a facade or a face for the product. Um, for the, yeah, here you can see different possibilities. And of course, th this small device makes very good quality sound. They're experts in that. Um, so the stability of the product was really important. So in the beginning, they wanted it big and chunky and, uh, and uh, nice and stable. But we said, well, let's, let's make it not big and chunky and nice and stable. We make it nice and slim, and we add an extra foot, which creates the stability. Um, that's the foot. You, more or less, you press it, and it clicks open. And uh, the, there you have your stability. Very simple. Uh, then they came to us and said, well, we want to make a range and a family out of it. And, and uh, luckily, we had thought about this kind of the definition of a grill. So, well, okay, we do that. Why not? That's, that's the signature. That's the, 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 the essence of the, your DNA. We're going to project that into, the, uh, into this other product, which is half the price, half the size, all that kind of uh, marketing description uh, mumbo jumbo. It turned out to be a very high quality product for a very good, affordable price. Uh, simple, but you, see it start, you start to see the family. And paying attention to detail. Um, office furniture. Cambo is a Dutch company. They produce office furniture. And um, we've been working with them on and off. And here, um, uh, they commissioned us to think about uh, sit and stand a piece of furniture, a table which when you can sit on and work and then you go up and you can stand and work. This is very important because the, the notion of uh, change uh, within your working description within the day is very important, both not only for ergonomics but also for your, the health of your body. So um, we started to look into this description uh, and the, the notion was to try to create one central pedestal and then have the furniture cantilevered out of it. Um, this, the idea was very simple and nice, but the engineering and the execution was extremely complicated. So the structure inside is quite impressive to get this notion. Again, I think tables, furniture which are kind of connected to the ground are very architectural and chairs such as the, the, the Eames Aluminium Group are very organic, it relates to your body. So this is kind of the end result, looking at the different possibilities. Uh, then going back, uh, my, the presentation kind of has no chronology to it, so it kind of goes back and forth. Then on uh, asked us to look into speakers a few years before the, the Envia, and uh, they were looking at wireless speakers, and at that time the docks were, you know, the, uh, the Bose thing where you put your iPhone in it and all that was really popular. And they said, we, we want to make a dock uh, speaker. We said, okay, well, let's take a look at it and see what's possible. Um, 
again, I wanted to kind of carve a little bit of a space, a language for them uh, in that sense. So we made a lot of different um, uh, descriptions in terms of the language, in terms of that DNA, what the form expresses to, to us in that sense. Um, Whoa. So could it be very articulated and architectural, almost a kind of a, a sophisticated uh, piece inside your home? Uh, could it be ex expressing sound and descriptions of uh, power or performance? Uh, could it be kind of uh, a, a cocoon, kind of something which was much um, softer and embracing within that context? Um, this turned out to be the final product we decided to kind of have a retracting uh, dock because we kind of saw that slowly people were not actually docking these, these products into the, the device. The whole idea of a wireless device, this should be something which I can have in my hand and control uh, from afar. And just basically a, a simple white cloud. And then of course you can dock it. And please con go back in the context of time uh, in that sense. We also developed a smaller portable version. Uh, Marantz uh, is also another audiophile that belongs to the same type of holding uh, with Denon, uh, but totally different company. Very um, uh, related to its traditions, related to its heritage, related to its kind of core uh, values, they look at materials in a different way. Uh, they use solid aluminium and wood and those kind of things. So I thought, well, we have to capture that within a, a, a portable speaker. We need to express that kind of description, that, the, 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 the definition on that. This is the result. Again, it's totally different to the, to the Denon. Uh, it has a, a molded plywood back. It has an aluminium uh, control element in the front. Uh, very expressive in their controls and uh, those kind of things. And uh, again, uh, with an, uh, a retractable uh, dock description with high-end con uh, connectors in the, in the back and, of course, uh, amazing sound, amazing sound. Samsung. Samsung uh, we worked for Samsung uh, uh, on several projects. Here they came to us with, uh, in those times, in 2008, 2009, they had introduced a camera which had a little screen in the front of it. And then you, would, you could kind of take f selfies w while seeing yourself in that screen. And they asked us, well, can you elaborate further on that? And, you, you know, we want to make a big line out of this and kind of make this bigger. And it's okay. Well, let's take a look at it. The first thing we thought was that maybe uh, it's not that important to see that screen all the time. So if you want to use that function, maybe you can click it and it pops out and then you can see yourself take a picture. The second thing we found out is that when you wanted to take a picture, how you hold that uh, camera is very, very difficult. It, it's not very, uh, uh, let's say, intuitive in, in the, the description of how you hold it. So we said, well, let's add a, a trigger button right in the front of it so you can just hold it in a normal way and you can press it. So kind of putting that kind of description together. And then looking at the typologies of cameras and uh, how cameras are manufactured and the materiality and all that and the respect for that type of uh, uh, language. Th this is another concept. Uh, here we thought that uh, well, let's encapsulate, make a very large screen in a, in a lo long way. And when you want to use that function, you flip the front and then you have a, a bigger screen in the front, and then you expose the, the capture button uh, by, by the function of its f flipping. And you really transform the product because of that description. Of course, uh, these, they love the ideas and all that, and uh, m many times as you work for consumer electronic companies, uh, within six months, that market is kind of gone or dead or whatever, and all these projects were uh, canceled. It's just uh, the life in the day of a designer in that world. Um, Alessi, this goes back to 2001. Um, uh, we had just started a couple of years in our, uh, our studio, and uh, uh, we had done a, a project which was quite successful with them. So they gave us kind of a little 
next possibility as these new designers to go come up with some new projects. Um, so we thought, well, some accessor desk accessories, these are project products which they never did. So well, this could be a nice space for you, you know, making kind of a, a, a tape dispenser or whatever. Oh, they were quite charmed. In, in, in 2001, it was also all about that kind of expressive language as kind of an um, animated description of a product. So we took the, the, the spool, the, 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 the tape, uh, where, where it has a spool in the middle. We made a hole to it. And then there's two access points. One is where you, you loop the tape up, and then the other part is where you cut the tape. So by that pure geometry, this definition was described. You know, it looks like a duck, and it's called quack, but it wasn't because we wanted to make a duck. Uh, it was just because of the geometry def defined by that product. Then uh, we thought about a, a, a little clip tree, you know, a magnetic uh, where you can hold clips, and we thought, well, why don't we extend that little element? Very simple, it's just a kind of the notion of design between something and nothing. Just a piece of plastic with a magnetic element in it, but then it becomes very gestural, very uh, um, descriptive, and it's very um, uh, clear to its function, the clip tree. Oh, sorry. And then, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, it's going all over the place. Let's see, yeah, one, two, yeah, uh, the third product was, now of course, uh, Alberto Alessi, um, the, uh, the, the man who was uh, running the company at that time, he said, well, well you know, you can't just make one, you, ha you have to make a family of things and then I can market it and I can sell it. So we thought about a letter opener, you know, the idea of a sharp blade, uh, it's not so friendly, it's a little bit dangerous and all that. We kind of uh, engulf it with uh, uh, a plastic element. And then where you need to kind of open the letter, it opens up and it exposes the sharp blade. Uh, we called it the alley the gator, and uh, it cuts uh, letters very nicely and very easily. But of course, these days, we don't open letters that much. So uh, as a product with that kind of function, it started to go. But what, what really is interesting about this family of products is that they saw an interesting market opportunity in the area of desks, accessories, and all that. I thought, wow, it's a brilliant idea to kind of go there. Uh, this is more than, uh, yeah, more than 10 years ago, so 14 years ago. Um, could be interesting. The, the, the products failed miserably. They didn't sell, it flopped. And I said, why? Well, this is kind of simple and nice and not very expensive. And the reason was that they sell gift items. And nobody wants to give to his boyfriend or girlfriend a letter opener or a tape dispenser or a, a paper clip holder. So it's very important to also think about what and how that company describes itself and how it works. Uh, so I really, I found the, the failure of these projects very interesting. Light Green, uh, 2000. Seven, we did some uh, independent projects which pre we presented in Milan, and one of, one of them was, call, uh, was called TAC. Um, this was based on a small LED light bulb. Uh, in 2007, a company which was associated with Philips, where we're in uh, contact with, uh, was developing an LED light bulb. Now it's everywhere, and it's just uh, um, pr uh, prolific in that kind of description, but at that time it was very new, so we thought it could be very nice to play with this uh, element. So the idea of two, adding two arms to this lamp, the idea of the, the double functionality of uh, ambient light or uh, directional light, the idea of sharing one light lamp with two colleagues, those kind of things became very interesting. The, the name TAC is, uh, means uh, branch, in uh, Swedish, so we thought, oh, could, it's very, uh, very gestural. We wanted to kind of create a, for, a formal language which was very uh, uh, powerful, very timeless in itself, very expressive. Um, so uh, that that's became different configurations. 
Uh, Offect is a Swedish company uh, producing furniture. Uh, they make very beautiful furniture, very high quality furniture, and they invest a lot of time and effort in developing their products. And we've been working with them for many, many years. Palma is one of the projects that we worked together with them. And here you can see the, the workshop in Sweden, uh, how the craftsmen are really looking to how developing the product, how we could kind of collaborate, make sure things are comfortable, uh, things work properly. Uh, and the notion of this design is more or less the palm of your hand, so something which kind of encapsulates or creates a space for you to sit on. The notion of your backrest, the armrest, and the seat, all kind of within one gesture of a line described. And of course, we made a little sister out of it for the dining or meeting area. Nokia. Um, Nokia has been a client of ours for many, many years. In 2003, we started collaborating with the Nokia. And uh, in 2005, they came to us with a that's 10 years ago, with the commission to design a fashion phone. And uh, the first thing I thought, well, what, what, is, what is a fashion phone? What do you mean a fashion phone? And they had kind of a line of fashion phones and they were pink and uh, they were blue, they had flowers on them, they were kind of cutesy and uh, it's like, wow, that's uh, so hard to design. How, what do you, how do you define that? So um, we went off and started to look at a whole nother description. So, well, we, we, sh we should think about materiality. We should look at form. Uh, we should de describe it in a very um, essential way. And then maybe the fashion comes out of it. Maybe that kind of stylistic expression can come through its uh, basic formal element. Uh, we looked into materiality, see how we could kind of express it. As you can see, there's nothing about fashion in these images. Nothing at all. So uh, we wanted to kind of stay away as much as possible from that element to see if we could, could, could create fashion. Um, surface and finishes and all that. So um, we pr pretended that our the assignment was something completely different. Uh, looking at, um, at that time, architecture, how things were being developed, how um, uh, formal descriptions were kind of being challenged uh, was very interesting. So we started to make a series of objects we had no fa function, just purely expressive elements which could slowly turn into something. The idea of a, a surface which starts in a straight description and then undulates just like a curtain into um, a rippled effect. The idea that surfaces can kind of transform from one layer to the other. Um, slowly things started to happen. The idea of taking a pattern and puncturing a, a block of material through it, and then through that kind of creating function. Um, and slowly they got kind of, oh, that's uh, interesting. I, oh, well, why not? And um, we start to elaborate on that, and we start to kind of look further into that. And of course, uh, at that time, around 10 years ago, phones had buttons, and they had many buttons, and they were hard to use, but uh, that was the reality. And this is the, the result. Uh, it was launched in 2007 uh, for the first time actually in Beijing, in China, which was never done by a European company. And it was a big hit and uh, either peop uh, big hit. People either loved it or they hated it. And I think that's the, the expression of fashion. You need to kind of walk on that description. Uh, then uh, later, uh, uh, we did some projects. I'm, I'm sure you're aware of the, the Nokia Lumia range. It started uh, a long time ago, five years ago, uh, 2010, and we were kind of um, describing the, the, the new smartphones for Nokia, looking at materials and aluminium and metal and metal and metal, and everybody wanted metal. But metal is not so good for smartphones because smartphones has, have a lot of antennas and metal kind of blocks the whole uh, idea of the antenna going through. So uh, we were struggling with this whole notion and in the workshop, one of the guys said, well, why don't we just make it out of plastic? And everybody looked like, well, what do you mean? Yeah, what? Something high quality plastic, you know, the same processes that we use for metal with CNC and all that, but we use it with a nice qualitative 
block of plastic, polycarbonate. And that's where the whole notion of uh, the Lumia came about. Yeah, here you can see some details and uh, different uh, aspects and different descriptions in that sense. Okay, um, now to the last pro product. The last project uh, I wanted to share with you, it's uh, a project we worked for Alessi. This is, has a big uh, uh, significance for us because it's the first project we did um, as a studio on our own. Um, uh, this is a project that uh, 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 I asked uh, Alberto Alessi if I can come and show, and, see, and he said, of course, come. I had a stack of sketches, I don't know how much, uh, lots of ideas, great things, cool things, and this was in them, in them, in them, and it was a sketch which I thought, well, I just, I'll just leave it in. I, I, I'm not so fond of it, but I leave it in. But he looked at it directly and said, "Wow, this is, this could be something for us." It's a very banal product. It's just a stainless steel bowl with a uh, translucent plastic inner cup. And it's for nachos and guacamole, for chips and chips, for strawberries and cream, for different combinations, you know? And that was uh, for him, oh, it's, it's a perfect Alessi product. It has stainless steel, it has color, it has this, that, and it has a new idea within that context. It's not new at all, but for him, it was very interesting. They launched it, and uh, opposite to the other project for Alessi, was a very, very big hit directly from the, the initial production, the, the launch of the product. So uh, it, it shows to you that when things are falling into place and they fit the, the brand perfectly, it can become um, very interesting. And on the other side, when uh, you don't really f find something which fits within that description, it can be a, a very interesting uh, failure in that sense. That was uh, my talk for you guys today, tonight. Thank you very much.